train image generation and soon video generation models up to 47 times faster. There are a few tricks and in this video we will explain all of those tricks on how they gain this massive image generation training and soon video generation training improvement. This paper focuses only on images but this can be 100% applied to video as well with just a bit more research. So let's say you're trying to generate image of a yellow cat. You just write that. Now if your model is trying to generate this image, you didn't exactly specify the color of every pixel here for example. So it's actually not even possible for the your image generation model to perfectly generate and predict this image. So you are calculating loss, how much every pixel is different, but there is no way for the model to know from your prompt, to learn even, what every pixel should be in such details. So from your prompt, a cat, uh, generate a cat, image of a cat, the model can know that, okay, what a cat looks like, what kind of ears it has, if you say cat is laying on a gray sofa, it uh, can know the uh, structure or the texture of sofa, textures of cat. Cat needs to have two eyes, cat needs to have like these legs and tail, but it cannot know every uh, pixel. So the trick with variational autoencoders, we want to separate generating this cat image into two parts. The first part is just generating latent representation of this cat. Uh, you can look at latent representation is like um, like a plan. So there it just describes what a cat should look like, what a cat looks like, what this cat... So it describes textures, legs, tail, eyes, but it doesn't describe if like this pixel right here is a bit brighter or a bit darker because that's not so important. It just describes that these all of these pixels should roughly uh, be this yellow or brown color, some should be a bit darker, some should be a bit lighter, but it doesn't describe every single detail. So latent representation is like a much a lot smaller plan, a lot smaller vector, let's say, than this if you transform this whole image into a big vector. So if you transform this image into a vector, then you would transform every pixel. Every pixel will have three values, red, green, blue. And so you do height times uh, height times width times three for red green blue so that's how many numbers you need a lot of numbers but latent representation can be 10 hundred times smaller than that or even more uh, times smaller because it doesn't need to uh, so then you would actually generate this latent representation in the first part with the diffusion transformer so diffusion transformer is what we are studying here in this paper and how to improve that so how to generate these latents better these plans and then a variational autoencoder would be used to go from that plan to the full image of the cat and that's trained a bit differently than the diffusion transformer so variational auto so uh, now we divide one complex task and we use the powerful diffusion transformer just for the plan and then we do a lot simpler task uh, of generating the full image from this latent. And this is a lot simpler, a lot better than trying to generate full image with the diffusion transformer, which will be very expensive and difficult. To summarize, the powerful expensive part, diffusion transformer, is generating just the plan, the outline, it's small. And then the cheap part is generating, converting that plan or latent uh, representation into the actual image. And that way we need 50, 100 times less resources because the fusion transformer needs to generate a lot smaller vector than the full image. And this is where the paper comes in. So until now, people have been using these variational autoencoders from stable diffusion. So that is trained to first convert this full image into latent representation and that's encoder. And then decoder part is trained to go from latent representation, which is a lot smaller vector, to the full image. So that way you train them both together. You train the encoder to go from full image to small plan and decoder from plan to full image. That's how you teach. And later in generation, you just use the decoder when generating images. But during training, you use both. The problem with stable diffusion autoencoder is that it just uh, learns 
to construct like pixels into latent and latent into pixels. It doesn't understand what a cat is. It doesn't as good as these other models like uh, Jeppa or Dino or these uh, models that are trained to like uh, solve some problems with images, computer vision. So uh, let me summarize. Variational autoencoder from stable diffusion just can construct, uh, turn pixels into latent, latent into pixels. It doesn't understand what a cat is. But there are models that actually understand, vision models that understand what a cat is. And usually their latent representation would are a lot bigger than these latent representations or vectors of stable diffusion. Because these are uh, condensing a lot more information about cat, what a cat is, what, what, what is what a cat does, etc. So uh, their idea is that if we use these rich representations to generate images, then we need a lot less training because uh, these rich latents actually already uh, have a lot more knowledge about cats. You see this old uh, stable diffusion latent space is good at capturing textures and lo local details, but lacks a deep understanding of the image's content, semantics. It doesn't inherently know that dog and cat are conceptually different things. It just knows that they have different pixel patterns. And it turns out this stable diffusion old way requires three times to six times more computation for the encoder and decoder. And they're using UNET while their new method is using a vision transformer block. Their new method is representation autoencoder. And here, instead of when somebody says generate an image of a cat, uh, we are not just encoding the pixel patterns of image of a cat, but we actually encode what cat means, what cat is. A lot more information about it. Join my school to become AI researcher, new video GPT from scratch, and I'm making content here every day. Math lessons, PyTorch, neural network from scratch, transformers, etc., and a lot more lessons. And they are using frozen pre trained encoder like Dino, Siglip, Maya. So these are all uh, different papers, and they are there to encode image of a cat into like a rich latent representation that describes what a cat is and not just the pixel patterns. So they're going to download and use this. They're not going to train their own encoder. And then what they will do is they will generate latents with this encoder and then train decoder to go from those latent rich representations back to the original ima uh, cat image. So then they train a lightweight transformer based decoder with one job perfectly reconstruct the original image from the rich features provided by the frozen encoder. So they're not training the, coder, the encoder. This way they create a latent space that is semantically rich. Latent space is just like, um, it's just like a coordinate system with all of these bunch of dimensions and each, each dot in that coordinate system is this vector of a cat, of a dog, of a car going down the highway. So that's like latent space. And it's very rich, it has a lot of dimensions. It has a lot of uh, semantic meaning of the things it's encoding. I put some code example here. I'm gonna leave this article below so you can check. So during training, encoder will be in eval mode, not tracking gradients, and decoder in train mode and tracking gradients, updating it. Now there are some issues. Diffusion transformer will struggle with such, with such big, rich, big latent vectors. So I want to explain this. So during the training of this image generation model, you just need the diffusion transformer and the decoder. And the diffusion transformer will take your description, cat, dog, cat, sitting here, and generate latent. And then decoder will convert that latent into actual image. Okay, so, so, and I actually did an experiment myself here. So uh, they found out that width or the model dimension of the diffusion transformer that's generating the latents must be as, at least 
same at least as the encoder-decoder dimension. If the diffusion transformer dimension is smaller, it's not possible for it, they showed mathematically, it's not possible to generate correct, uh, correct vectors or latents that are gonna be correctly decoded by the decoder. So look at my experiment here. My encoder-decoder latent dimension is 768. And if I put the diffusion transformer latent dimension to smaller, uh, 340, 84, you see this blue line, it's actually not crossing this red line that's necessary to create a good reconstruction. But if I make it at least equal or bigger, so my diffusion transformers uh, inner dimension equal or bigger, then it will cross down this. So I hope, I don't know why I have so many of these spikes. And uh, this is done. They also did this experiment on a single image. So they try overfitting a single image. So I just recreated the experiment trying to overfit single image. Now, maybe I undertrained. Nevertheless, you see for the same amount of training, uh, this here, is worse, worst, and these two are better. Now, maybe I didn't train, I should have trained maybe even more completely. Maybe at the end, the, it would be same as this. These two would be same as original, but this one wouldn't be able to be same as original, no matter how long I train. So that's maybe the idea as I understand it. But here, maybe I just undertrained. In this image from the paper, they show that uh, you must have at least same width or diffusion transformer width uh, higher if you have that width lower than the decoder decoder then it doesn't matter how much depth your diffusion transformer has like how many layers how many repetitions it will not be able to reproduce so the way i understand transformers is depth is like refinement 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 but with uh, the size embedding size is its ability to represent information or space or storage to represent so if it doesn't have enough storage doesn't matter how much it's refining those that information it doesn't have enough storage to accomplish the goal of creating a vector that's that has uh, enough information next problem we know that this diffusion transformer it starts from a completely noised latent space latent vector and it gradually denoises this is the standard diffusion process. Uh, I won't go in depth here, so you can watch how diffusion works in different videos. Now, the problem here is that now we have a lot bigger vector and emb vector embedding, the latent representation. So this amount of noise that's added to diffusion transformers generally is too small. So it's not noising enough. So during training, it's not noised enough. So the diffusion transformer doesn't learn to create good latent representation of the image from total noise because there is not, not, not enough noise during training. So uh, they come up with a method to add uh, more noise to these uh, bigger, rich vectors. So now they're calculating noise based on the size of this embedding vector, the latent space vector. And it turns out in this case that I did this experiment, um, we need to add almost seven times more noise compared to the standard stable diffusion variational autoencoder. And they describe how they calculate uh, this in the paper. And in my experiment, actually my model is training a lot better if I add uh, more noise. So this loss is better. I just trained a little bit. Uh, in the beginning so this is 10 epochs i think they train on thousands and thousands on epochs the whole thing but i, I don't have this much compute and uh, i don't know if i should do that for this video i think this is enough to show but tell me your opinions below the main thing to understand with noising if you have a small vector and you corrupt it with like 10 percent noise and you have a big vector and you also corrupt it with 10 percent noise even though it seems like both of them are 10%, so this percentage will be, like this number will be bigger, so they are equally affected. Actually, in the big vector, information is better spread across 
more dimensions. So if you are also corrupting big vector with just 10% of it, uh, even though it seems like it's it's good, it's actually not because you need to corrupt it with a lot more noise because the, it's better represented and better spreading information. Another problem is that the fusion transformer will likely generate a bit of noise even if it's in its final generation of what's supposed to be clean uh, latent representation. There could still be, or there will usually still be a noise as well. But you train your decoder to generate images from perfectly unnoised, perfectly clean uh, latents. So you're not going to get perfectly clean latents from your diffusion transformer ever or almost ever. And then uh, you need to also train the decoder to actually generate from these a bit noised latents, not perfect latents. So adding a small amount of noise to the encoder's output and makes the decoder more robust at, uh, at handling the imperfect latent generated by the diffusion model. This is called example, so it just adds the perfect encode, perfectly encoded latent and this noise, which is generated a bit of random noise. So first, I showed what happens if you don't train decoder to reconstruct from noisy, uh, a bit noisy latent. So the more noise there is in that latent, the worse reconstruction. Here at the right, you see the worse reconstruction. But then I trained the decoder to actually generate from a bit of noise. And if the noise is just a little bit, then it actually creates better. And here I also got for a bit more noise. I also got that it creates uh, improvement over not training the decoder to handle noisy latents. And in this case, in this amount of noise, it seems a bit worse. So I'm not sure, maybe I made also some mistakes in setup uh, of the experiment, or maybe this is like real, maybe de it depends on the amount of noise. At the end, they use a trick. Instead of making the entire diffusion transformer wider, you can just make the last few layers wide and keep the previous layers narrow. So the na narrow layers can have standard 768 dimension and so attention mechanism and everything is a lot easier faster to compute and this can provide a lot of information processing and the last few layers for example two can have the wide uh, dimension with vector embedding latent embedding necessary like 2048 and there is a, a key difference so standard transformer layers will just take input from the previous layer but their DDT head takes not only input from the previous, but the original noisy latent as well. And this is the trick they use to save a lot of on computation. And I think that's going to be it for this video. Join my school. I just recorded GPT from scratch, a 40 minute video. And I have a lot more lessons on math, PyTorch, neural network from scratch, transformers from scratch, and uh, some other videos. And I'm making new content every day here. So see you next time.